So here's what happened. It was two days after I had posted my video where I bleached my hair, and I was just casually scrolling through my Instagram DMs when I saw this. I don't know, young. <laughs> Ladies and gents, we had made contact. And then the fateful idea hit me. What if I just dropped everything and flew out to New York for Brad to do my hair? I mean, it seemed insane, but that's kind of my brand, so it didn't take much work on my part to convince my mother that we should fly out to New York tomorrow morning and have Brad do my hair. So we bought the tickets and got pumped for what would surely be an exciting hair makeover. Now, being the woman of class and maturity that I am, I obviously was not going to show up at Brad's doorstep not bearing gifts. So it was the evening before the flight when I went out looking for supplies to bake cookies for the Mon. Hello, my dudes. It is currently almost 9.30 p.m. and I am walking to Metro, my local grocery store, to get supplies to bake cookies for Brad Mondo. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of terrified because I've never been out this late. Do I have my knife? Of course I do. I'm giving you guys real flashback Mary vibes here. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll stop. We've arrived. You know what? I dare you to jump me right now, aliens. I know you're watching this, and I know the prospect of jumping me is becoming even more and more appetizing. With these milk chocolate chips in my hands, I have the power of God and Jesus on my side. Ah! Hello, my dudes. What's up? It's already past 10 p.m., so time is really of the essence here. I'm gonna bake these cookies as fast as possible. I'd like to say that I'm a master cookie baker at this point, you know? I've baked well over 3 million cookies at this point in total. Not really. Don't look that up. So you know what? This is gonna be a walk in the park. I swear, if I fall, it is your fault. Now, not gonna lie, we don't have baking soda, so we're gonna have to use baking powder. So Brad, if you're watching this, maybe don't eat the cookies. <laughs> Dang flabbit, I don't have enough butter. Is olive oil an option? Let me explain what this is. So I was an idiot and forgot that you cannot microwave an egg, and I just microwaved the egg and butter mixture, and now I've poached an egg. No, you know what? That's great. And I ate the poached egg. Brad, I cannot stress this enough. Don't eat the cookies. This was by far the most turbulent time that I've ever made cookies. I didn't have enough butter. I ended up having to use olive oil. Okay, and then I made my nipple cookies, and you know what? They ended up actually looking pretty good. I baked it. I had some extra cookie dough, so I tried to make a cookie cake. I had this little baby skillet, so then I put the cookie dough in there and let them sizzle for a good 10 minutes. And then when I took it out, the cookies, they were a little bit burnt, so Brad, I'm sorry. The cookie itself was pretty good, not gonna lie. Mother Goose got excited, and she smelled it from the second floor, so she came running downstairs, and we devoured it together. But yeah, I'm gonna go to bed now. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and don't let the bed bugs bite. Papa, don't preach. I've been losing sleep. Papa, don't preach. It is Saturday, August whenever, and today is the day that we fix the mess on my head. I'm excited. I'm pumped. My blonde ambitions are gonna come true. Yesterday, I went to Aritzia. I wasn't planning on buying anything. I didn't need anything. But turns out they were having a 40 to 70% sale. And let me tell you, I had to do a double take. I bought these camo shorts because camo is just an essence of life. It's the pattern of people that like to get stuff done. So yes, I will take 20 of these. So that's what I'm wearing today. Ooh, someone forgot their glasses. But yeah, the flight today is at 10.55 and then we get in New York at 12.30 p.m. And then at 2 p.m. I'm getting my hair done. So that's kind of the lay of the land. That's the plan for today. And so I gobbled down my breakfast as fast as possible and got ready for the adventure ahead. Now I was literally only flying there for less than a day, so I really only needed one tiny backpack to fit all my necessities. I mean, usually I take my entire closet, the toilet, and the monster underneath my bed with me wherever I go, but I somehow managed to convince myself that no, I don't need five different shirts on a one day trip. Back to my excursion. I packed up Brad's cookies, brushed my tooth, yes, just the one, and put on my foot. Then I was left waiting for my mother. Unfortunately, my father would not be coming with us because he had some big scary professor stuff to do, so it would just be Mother Goose and I descending on the city of Angles. She was taking this seriously, let me tell you. She had her outfits all planned out and ready to go. At around 8 a.m., we were deposited like sediments at the doors of Pearson Airport. We were ready to wreak havoc. What can I say? We're flying hazards. It's me who causes the turbulence, not the wind. 
mind. Anyways, soon I remembered that in a couple hours I would surely get hungry. What else did you expect from me? So I went on a hunt for something to lunch on. Airport food is disgustingly, grotesquely overpriced, so you really just have to close your eyes and pay for it at the end of the day. Let me just say that I bought a lot of trash. What? I wanted to try it all. I'm trying to expand my taste buds. What does that mean? I don't know. Just don't be surprised when one day I start a video and I'm just one big taste bud. Hello my dudes. It's around 10 a.m. right now and I am ravenous, so it's time to eat lunch. I bought a turkey sandwich. It looks pretty good. It came with two packaged pickles. That is a very weird shape. You know what? There's worse things in life. I mean, I'll eat it because when you're hungry, I'll eat anything. And then I forced down that darn pickle, which might I add, tasted kind of like what I expect piss to taste like, and started on that ham sandwich. It was good. The bread, oh my god, don't even get my wheels going. When I finished it though, I was still hungry, so I also ate this Caesar salad. Now this is where Starbucks bamboozled me. They gave me the sauce separately, so I had to do the gross job of pooping that white liquid all over the romaine, and I wanted to gag. It was wrong in every single direction, north, south, west, pest, and breast. But regardless, it was time to board the plane, so I packaged up my salad and climbed onto the plane where I would continue my feast. I wasted no time devouring it. The romaine was not going to eat itself. It was good, as good as packaged salad can be. But anyways, at this point, my mother and I were both extremely tired, so we crashed on the plane. Except that I couldn't. You know why? Because one, the takeoff was literally too bumpy for any normal human behavior. I mean, seriously, the pilot must have been drunk. And two, when we were already in the air, turbulence decided to have some fun. I thought I was going to die, okay? I was sweating buckets. Those stupid clouds couldn't just mind their own business, could they? Somehow my mother managed to sleep through the whole thing though, so maybe I was just being a dramatic Debbie. Oh, what's that sound? Why? It's me arriving in New York, ready to cause chaos, of course. It was around 12 p.m. at this point and we still had the entire day ahead of us. So we kidnapped a taxi driver and he took us back to our hotel. The room was really modern and my mom loved it. She was having a blast and busy obsessing over the portable steamer, which was hilarious. <laughs> Hello, my name is Joanna Cedia, and I'll be your interpretive dance teacher. <laughs> Hello, my dudes. What's up? We've just arrived at the hotel. It looks like Ikea and the Hampton had a baby. This is just too sophisticated for me. I should not even be here. Why is there a TV in front of the bed? Anyways, we're about to go over to meet Brad. This mess on my head is no longer going to be a mess on my head. Anyways, I'll see you guys in a bit. So we left the hotel room, made our way to the lobby, and then... I had blacked out. Not really. I just met Brad and his brother Eric, and then he did my hair. We started by bleaching my follicles once again to get it even lighter. I was having a blast, and so was Brad. I was finally doing my hair the right way. Long were gone the days of box bleaching. My hair, it's something else. Honestly, if my hair exploded, I would not be surprised. But anyway, so something's marinating right now. Brad did something, but it looks good. He said it's gonna look good, so I trust his judgment. Now they're actually gonna do makeup. I've never worn makeup. What even is makeup? Who invented it? Top 10 questions science can't answer. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, I'll see you guys later. It was time for makeup. Now, Brad had the wonderful idea to go beyond the expectation. He was gonna do my makeup too. Enter Joelle Stage Left, the makeup artist. He was incredible. He did my makeup like it was the easiest thing of all time. Not gonna lie, getting your hair and makeup done at the same time are two of the most relaxing things ever. I was about to fall asleep in that chair. I think it's also worth mentioning that we had been doing this madness for the past four hours. I wasn't complaining though. A hairbrush, a dabble of eyeshadow, a swipe of mascara, a pinch of salt, and a gram of cocaine. Dinner is served. Things I observed while all of this was happening. Brad's brother, Eric, is hilarious. He was just long for the ride the entire time and it was the best thing ever. Number two, blondes do have more fun. They are nuclear, let me just say that. I felt like my chaotic tendencies were increased tenfold. And number three, this is completely unrelated, but does anyone remember Jacob Sartorius? It takes a lot for me to hate someone, but it was in that salon chair that I realized how much I do hate him. Like, where are your parents? No, Mr. Sagittarius, we don't want to see your 12-year-old body. Moral of the story is, someone stop Jacob's saggy titties. Anyways, eventually we finished the makeover. I was looking stupendous, but it was all a result of the hard work of Mr. Brad Mondo and his buddies. We took loads of photos, and everything was just whizzing past me at the speed of light. Was I awake? Had I been cloned? Did I still have two kidneys? But nay, the makeover was complete. I need to say a big thank you to Brad, Eric, and Joelle for making this happen and letting me know that looking like this is not okay. I will leave their social medias in the description box below, as well as a link to Brad's video where he documented this entire process in more detail. Anyways, eventually I woke up from my blackout to find a blonde, painted face staring back at me, and I was having a tough time processing it. 
What the heck just happened? I look like a different person, but in the best way possible. This is what happens when you give Brad Mondo an entire day to do what he wants to your hair. And let me tell you, worth it. So worth it. I'm wearing fake eyelashes. I've never worn fake eyelashes. I feel like a different person. I feel like I'm catfishing all of you. It's already 11.30. The cool thing about this hotel is that there's a mini Dylan's candy bar in the lobby. And you best believe that my mother and I, we went ham. They had chocolate covered s'mores, chocolate almond clusters, chocolate covered cookie dough balls. They had everything chocolate covered and I ate all of it. I'm feeling a little bit nauseous now, but you know what? It was worth it. This is probably the last you're gonna see of me. I'm gonna pass out after this. Love you guys so much and I'll see you guys in the next one. Toodles!